Hi again, it's me, and I wanted to quickly demonstrate how to paint a peacock feather, just because I mentioned it in the feather tutorial, and uh, I wanted to show you guys how to do it instead. You apply the same methods as you do the normal feather, but things are a little bit different with peacock feather, and you'll see what I mean once we get started. First, I'm going to get rid of this little doodad in the corner because, once again, it's very distracting. And I'm going to go up to new layer and I'm going to add a new layer. Once again, I need a quill. This one's going to be very thin, though, and very dainty. And actually, it can be a little bit shorter than that because this is going to have a rather large plume at the top of it. <clears throat> and then I'm going to add another new layer. And I'm going to paint my lines. You will note that instead of keeping this together as I did in my first feather tutorial, these feathers are going to be very sparse. And that would be because Peacock feathers tend to be very um, sparse, and uh, they're more kind of wispy even. Getting the right lines, though, that's the trick. Because, you know, while they, while they are wispy, it's 2 o'clock in the morning and I can't talk very well. Um, while they are very wispy, they're also kind of more stiff. They have um, a stiffness to them. And once we get to the top, this is where we're going to become a little bit more careful and uh, where we're going to want to paint it closer together instead of so far apart because this is what formulates the eye of the peacock feather. This is a very uniform part of the peacock feather. The eye is typically, well, eye-shaped if you look at it. And I guess that's why they call them the eyes of the feathers. And uh, you can step back and take a look at your peacock feather and make sure that you like um, so far the shape and the size and everything. What I'm actually going to do is now that I've established where my eye is, I'm going to go ahead and pull this back to full size. <clears throat> and now we've established a pretty good peacock feather. I might actually go in and make this a little bit more tight. Um, you might also want to Google peacock feathers so that you can actually look at one while you're painting it so that you can get a good idea of how they are supposed to look and how tight the feathers are at the top and so forth. You can even like make this come out a little bit if you wanted, like so. They're actually pretty, um, they pretty much vary in their shapes and sizes, you know, how the eye is and how the top is and so forth. So we'll make that a little bit more fancy. Uh, 
too much. Mm, I don't like those lines. And you can tell I'm very picky by nature. So I'm going to try not to be too picky because I just want this to be a kind of quickie demonstration. And I still have yet to cover coloring it in and so forth. So Eh. We'll just leave it like that. You can actually come up here and add some longer ones in so that it's maybe a little bit more thick at the top. Um, it can also follow this curve if you like. Okay, so um, the first thing that I need to do before I start. Oh, look at that. You see? See that little line is not connected. Fix that real quick. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to want to do is probably darken this because like white doesn't take color very well. So I tend to darken it to a grayscale and then it tends to take it a little better. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to gradient this like an orange and green. Let me see if I can get a good I think I need to swap this. I make this one yellow. You might actually have to make your own gradient for this, like I just did. Not a big deal. <clears throat> Actually, I think what I'm going to do there we go. I think that's real close. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to want to make the quill color. Um, we're going to make it this dark teal. Probably one of the reasons why I like uh, peacock feathers so much is they are just this really pretty teal and gold color. Okay, so um, we've established the base color. Now we're going to go in and we're going to actually add the eye in. Oops. Going too fast. Okay, so um, the first thing is you need a circle, obviously. And you need it to be like a pretty bright orange. And we're going to use a hard brown brush. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. Like so. And then we're going to set this to a different mode. Oh, multiply doesn't work. It's just a question of finding the right one. Okay. 
actually, you know what? Change your mind. We're not going to do this on the numerator at all. And pardon that, that would be thunder. I guess it's going to rain. So that's not going to work either. Okay, so what I'm going to have to do is make a new layer down here and merge this down. This way the feather is on its own layer and the color is merged and I can actually paint on top of it. Then this little button right here I'm going to activate. This makes it so that you're not painting, you're painting directly on the layer and it won't let you paint off of the feather itself. So it keeps the transparency. And then we're going to go ahead and repaint that eye. Actually, yeah, let's just go ahead and paint that eye. Yeah, hmm. I did not think about all this. <clears throat> It's not like I paint peacock feathers all the time. And like I said in the last video, sometimes it's trial and error. I uh, have painted them before though, but it's been a while. Okay, so now I'm going to paint my eye <clears throat> like so. And actually you might even want to have had painted more strands in because this should probably generally be thicker than it is. But it's all right for this demonstration. Okay, so this is the base of the eye. And we're basically going to uh, alternate colors here. Let's go with green. I'm going to turn this down just a little bit. And I'm just going to follow the outside. And this side. Darker blue. Uh, make sure you stay on the very edge barely see that. And you can even come in here and paint some hard lines. And you'll have to excuse the hysterical laughter that is emanating from my living room. That would be my son watching some program on TV. I don't know. And like I said, I mean, technically this should be a lot thicker in the lines in here. I'll show you why. Take that off. This should be um, actually pretty thick, almost solid. Um, the fact that uh, I have too many spaces in here is kind of throwing it off a little bit. And actually, I mean, even from here, I could, you know, fix this. But these should be like really, really tight. Like so. So that you have a good solid base here to paint your eye on. It's okay though, it's not a big deal. Just paint it again. Remembering to turn that back on. If I could paint anything straight, it would be And then we want to alternate into the green. Oh, 
Oh my gosh, I am just so terrible. I think it's because my tablet is a little sideways. <clears throat> but you get the general idea. And then you can actually also add in dodging, just like we did in the last tutorial. Of course, you probably want to do this before you've added the color, because it's kind of throwing my color a little bit off, but that's all right. <clears throat> Oops, that's more than I have that still. Okay, one more thing that you're going to want to do with the peacock feather is you're going to want to go to, where is it, noise, and you're going to want to add some noise because peacock feathers, if you've ever looked at them, are kind of sparkly, actually, and they're almost metallic looking. And then you're going to, after you've merged the layer, now you can actually come in here and add a little bit of highlight to it. Um, you can also try to use mid-tones. And you'll not really remove the color per se, but add a specularity to it. Turn it white, actually, instead of green. And then you can come over here and you can adjust the contrast of it. Hue, of course, but you wouldn't really want to do that because these are typical colors of a peacock. You can um, turn up the color a little bit here. Yeah, that's proverbially the same. Anyway, I mean, that gives you a kind of basic idea of how to go about doing it. And I mean, once again, no two peacock feathers are ever the same. So you can really, you know, change it up and make it really different every time that you paint them. I'm going to be picky for a second. And even in here, these feathers right here should be a little bit more tight. But like I said, I didn't want to turn this into a two-hour thing. I mean, I just kind of wanted to demonstrate how to apply this to a different type of feather. Actually, I'm just going to bake it real quick. Oops. give you a better idea of how it should look. This should all be really packed in and tight. Like so. You can add 
little bit of speck here and there. You gotta, you know, really make it look metallic. And you can even like sharpen it. Oh no, that's too much. <clears throat> I mean, and the same thing applies. You know, you can use the same tricks like the blur, the Gaussian blur, and then the fade. Like we did in the other tutorial. You can try some different modes. They all do different things. As I've explained in like my uh, hair painting tutorials. Just kind of play around with it until you get something that you really like. It's probably a little too metallic -y looking. Let's go with multiply. And um, once again, you can duplicate this and thicken it up or even make it look a little bit more prominent. Um, I mean, same rules generally apply. You know, you can change the contrast or the brightness of the feather. using the different modes of brightness and contrast. Oops, that was my mouse being weird. Um, and then you can mess with the colors, but like I said, you know, there's really no need to do that. You can go for, on the other hand, like white peacock feathers. Two, that is actual color. You might want to actually add a little bit of blue into here though because I think they are actually white and blue. Um, there's another way that you can go about doing this and that would be to use the sponge tool and the desaturate mode. Then you can control what you're desaturating a little bit better. There are other ways to kind of get this to be white and leave the uh, rest of it colorized but this is the quickest way to show you what I mean with the white peacock feather it might take you a little bit of time to get this all saturated And then ramp up the brightness. And even this yellow spot in the center should probably be blue. So there's a quick way you can try to do this um, by repli using replace color and changing the saturation. Um, you might have to play with this a little bit though because it's not really perfect. And I would actually recommend over that just recolorizing it, it's just because it's a little more consistent. Um, you can just use, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Just use color mode and you can just come in here and recolor it. Um, actually, now multiply it a little bit to Anyway, you get the general idea. On how to, oops, and that's why I'm in the wrong mode. <laughs> you can just come in here and recolor it real quick and no big deal. I'm just going to be really sloppy with this because uh, 
like I said, I'm not doing this for any specific reason other than to show how to do it. <clears throat> and so, uh, probably want to lighten it even more. Like so. And then um, blur it even more. And then fade Gaussian blur, and then hit the screen button, and that makes it look a little bit more wispy. I mean, you can actually make the eye look a little bit darker. I think it actually is a little bit darker if you Google um, albino peacocks, I think it is, or just white peacocks. Maybe they're not known as albino, but anyway, you get the general idea. So there you go. That's how you paint a peacock better. And uh, don't forget, I'm still going to be doing the angel wings tutorial, so keep your eye out for that. See you next time.